Hey everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today. I'm tying another uh, carp fly. This is the wee foam beetle that I use a lot of the year or a lot of the summer. Um, fishing the rivers with the overhanging vegetation, this can be very productive for the wild carp. Um, as always, we'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel. Get access to the members only content, the online fly tying classes and enter the giveaways for the flies that are tie on the channel. Alternatively you can like the video, share the video, watch it all the way to the end, comment below, that all helps the channel. So I've got my hook in my vise, now I'm using a carp hook, like a bait hook, it's a, an owner C6 BL, it's a size 6, but it's probably about a size 10 if you think about a fly hook, like a standard shank fly hook. But it's very stout, right? And it's the same hook as was often uh, marketed for fly anglers. Um, but a lot of folk complain, oh, you can't get them, they're not on the market. It's just these, right? Um, buy them from the bait shop. I've run on some Unith. Uh, 8 in black and I'm going to catch in, I've got a block, a wee strip of foam here it's about a hook gap maybe slightly over the hook gap and square and I'm going to catch it in sort of say at the midway point in the shank and then spiral back to the end of my thread base, which is around the hook bend, over there, and then I'll come up. And I'm not compressing this foam too much in the body, I like to keep that buoyancy, but I'm going to take several wraps here at the bend, right, to lock that in place. Take my thread back up, up to the, the front, and then we're going to get some Spectra Flash Dubbing and Peacock. Um, you could use Peacock Herald or another or East Dub or something. The Dubbing lasts longer than the Herald, which is why I use it. And it's a wee bit flashier. And I also tie these for a friend of mine who fishes them as a zig bug um, on his bait rod. Uh, basically, casting them out on a weight and a long leader and lets them float in the water column. Um, and he catches a lot of fish. And he reckons the sparkly one, the wee bit of sparkle from the, the dubbed body seems to work a bit better than the peacock body. Um, I don't know that it makes a great deal of difference as a dry fly though. So I'm dubbing backwards and I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure right on the on the foam underbody. I'm just covering it but I'm coming back to my anchor point and then I'll spiral through Again, just sort of slightly tightening the dubbing so it's not too loose but I've not compressed this underbody section here too much and I've got my wee sparkly body over the foam you don't need to worry too much, carp don't have sharp teeth so it's you don't need to worry about it getting a little chomped up you know, the, the because it's a soft underbody it'll be okay so pull my foam forward, give it a bit of a stretch and again just gradually tighten the wraps, get plenty of wraps in, make sure that's nice and secure come to the front and I'm going to build a wee ball of thread, a wee bump right behind the eye um, and then I'll tie the foam just behind it and that kind of kicks it up and it makes it easier to tie the fly on your leader a wee bit too far forward there. There we go. And we're going to just tighten that. I can compress this foam in the middle. That's no such a big deal. Now I'm ready for my legs. So turn that upside down. And I'm going to get three small round rubber. I like to keep them together. Which makes life easier. And 
I'm going to take a very light figure of eight. Right, I'm just going to come over, hardly any tension. I've got my wee X wrap. I'll just let the bobbin hang. I've no tightened in. And I can now sort of position them and wiggle them. See if you lift them up, that will pull the X together on your wee X wrap. If you lift them, you can tighten, take a wrap. And then I'll get a few more wraps in. To lock them. And then I'll hold one set of legs, one side. I'm not no stretching them, I'm just holding them. And then I'm just give them a wee that side the wee pop, and then I'll grab these three and I'll do the same. And give them a pop and that will separate them. And I'm going to come in with some more dubbing. And I like to keep the fly upside down so I can let's see which leg wants to go where and then I'll take like on my side there's the one that wants to go at the back and this one wants to go at the back and I'll take a couple of turns of dubbing sometimes they fight you a wee bit you need to push them and pull them but that's fine then I'll take my middle leg Just uh, then come in, just make sure they sit vaguely separate, you don't want them too close together. You just come in, take away any excess dubbing, you can still sort of adjust the legs, but you sort of made sure they're separate. And then because this sits low to the surface, we've got a wee bit of orange foam just as a sighter. Two or three turns of thread is enough. I'll bring everything to the front. And whip finish. And again. Make sure it's nice and tight, cut the thread, I'll come in, use the curve of the scissor, so it's just in front of the eye, cut, we'll knock the corners off just to sort of help it look a bit more natural. Although I don't know that it's a huge issue. Cut the sighter. I don't want the sighter to be apparent to the fish. It's for us. Then I'll come in and I'll cut my legs. Quite short, maybe about a shank length. You know, beetles tend not to have great big spindly legs. But I had some out the flies done. So there you go, hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below. I'll see you for another one. Tight lines guys, bye.